Battle Squad, KJ Wine the Red Leo, back again with another video, man. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get all my content whenever I drop it. Don't forget to leave the video a like and give me a big thumbs up. And last but not least, leave a comment, man. I always like to know what you guys is thinking, and I always hit the people back up. You can believe that. What we got right now? We got Planet Hulk. This is my fourth comic book review of Planet Hulk, I believe. But we'll be doing issue number five and possibly number six. Just a quick recap. The Hulk was sent off of Earth by the Illuminati. No, not the Illuminati you're thinking. The comic book Illuminati. It was supposed to be, he was supposed to be sent to a planet that wasn't inhabited by any intelligent life. And it was a place where the Hulk could pretty much live out his days. Some type of spatial disturbance happened, sent him veering, careening to the planet Sakaar, where, where he was in a gla where he wind up being captured by the people of the planet. He was thrown into the gladiatorial arenas where he pretty much had to fight for his freedom. And they broke out, and that's where we are now. Following events from the last video that I did on this, the Hulk and David Banner were having their own little conversation between themselves over who is going to control the body. The Avengers Infinity War kind of plays on this between that and end games. So we start off here. This is their camp. And you have a few guys here talking. And they're pretty much discoursing. One guy saying that, you know, the Hulk is the Sakarson of legend and the one guy is not really buying it here. And then Meek is defending the Hulk saying that he's been with the Hulk from the start and you can see Meek is attacking this guy and while that's happening the guy was pretty much insulting the Hulk and Meek just become being the guy is insulting the Hulk and Meek is just coming to the Hulk's defense and the guy was like well doesn't he eat people and Meek was like the Hulk doesn't eat anybody but then we have it right here the Hulk was like don't be so sure about that but it was just a joke Moving on, we have a spy here or something. It was a spy that was in the midst of their camp. So whenever they escaped the arena and escaped the Red King, this spy must have followed them or they had them infiltrate their camp. And you see the war, uh, I still hadn't got her name, Sierra. I don't know how to pronounce it right. But you have her right here and the, the rest of the Red King's army, they're pretty much searching them out. They're searching the war bound and everyone out. And he was being contacted by them. Yeah, he was trying to contact them and said, you know, let me get in closer. Let me get a little bit more information. But they wasn't trying to have any of that. Because guess what happened? They dropped bombs on me. Yeah, the Hulk basically found out that he was being spied on. Now, I like the Hulk in this rendition because this the Hulk is, isn't really just a dumb brute in Planet Hulk. The Hulk actually has some intelligence, and this goes back to Hulk and David Banner fighting over control of the body. So go watch those other videos. I'm quite sure I explained it some way, somehow. I got a playlist up. Moving on. I believe this was a mistake on their behalf because not only did they they were trying to eradicate the Hulk, but we know that's not happening, but they lost their trail. They lost the scent, so they couldn't keep track of them. The only person wind up dying was their spy. Moving along here some more, I think we have some continuity issues here because time seems to, with comic book magic, it seems to kind of just speed on by here. So we have, I'm just going to call her the Old Strong until I get her name right, because that's her title. But we have the Hulk and his gang pretty much trying to uh, ambush these guys, but it's a trap that's being set. One of the members of the Hulk gang is a native to the planet, and he's kind of a tacticianer. So he realizes the game that's being played, and I like how this moves along. We have a lot of that right here. You see the Hulk and them spying out these guys up here that are ready to pretty much ambush them whenever they come down here. And you can see them discoursing. Uh, I 
can't remember her name, but she is trying to go down and attack them, and that's when the guy says, no, nah, we shouldn't do that over here. And then you see them, and that's where they're deliberating a little bit on what they should do next. Moving on a little bit further, we have some natives of the planet again, or I don't think the red people are the natives of the planet. It, it, it didn't spe specify that, but I see a lot of dynamics that's going on between correlation between this and the government and between the government and the people. You have the people suffering in one way or another. They're, you know, trying to reach out to the government, but then the government's like, oh, no, that's your problem. Yeah, so you have these guys right here pretty much pleading for help. They're living out on the fringes somewhere, and uh, these robots, the wild bots, are always attacking them, and they're trying to get this general or whatever this guy's governor or whatever, trying to get him to help them out because the Hulk is coming, and they're afraid of the Hulk and his gang. And he's like, you know, we're going to handle this Hulk, fella. But you guys are going to have to worry about these uh, wild bots by yourself. And lo and behold, the wild bots come and attack. But at the same time that the wild bots are attacking, it's actually the Hulk taking down one of these wild bots. I don't know if you guys can see that real good or not. But yeah, that's the Hulk taking down one of the wild bots. The Hulk winds up staying at this city with these people overnight with his group. Now we're going to start to see some little character development on Meek, and this is going to be real important later on in the story. It's this thing called chiming or chiming bonding, and it's sort of Meek sharing all his memories with the Warbound. And you can see Meek sharing his memory with them. His father here, who fought in the, what is it called, the Spike Wars, and we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, it shows Meek father, he said he fought in the Spike Wars, or whatever, and then you see that uh, he had children, and he wasn't supposed to have children, and he was on land that was supposed to be given to him, but then now they're taking the land, and supposedly they killed his children, but that, it definitely killed Meek's father. <clears throat> and this is how Meek got into the gladiatorial arenas, how Meek became a slave. He kind of shares this experience with them, and uh, it's like a hive type thing that they do. This makes Hulk and the Warbound now Meek's new hive. And it all turns around full circle because the people that they are spending the night at winds up being the headsmen is what they call them. He winds up being the very, the very same guy that killed Meek's dad. So, now they have a ritual fight that they are going to go through. As you see, Meek's finding this out. He can smell them, and he brings back these memories. They have a ritual fight that they're going to go through. The main guy that's a tacticianer, he's trying to train the rest of them, and... The, the guy who killed Meek's dad, it's like, you know, you're going about that wrong. Those techniques are, you know, years old. You can't use these same techniques now. He's trying to help them out. Meek, Korg, and Hulk have, like, a little conversation. Korg is like, you know, we're your family now. You don't have to worry about this. You can let this be. We are now fighting a different fight now. These people are in pretty much in the same situation that we're in, and Meek's not trying to hear any of that. So Meek looks for guidance from the Hulk, and the Hulk's like, Meek is looking for guidance for the Hulk because Meek is trying to find justice and vengeance for his lost ones, and the Hulk is like, I would never stop making them hurt. Moving on to the battle, which seems to go by pretty quickly, we have Meek and the head, headsmen getting ready to go into their, their battle. Guy takes Meek down pretty good, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And you have him taking him down. But Meek gets the upper hand on him here, if you can see down there. Meek gets the upper hand on him. Meek's on top of him, ready to give him the kill blow. But at the same time that this is happening, the chiming thing starts happening again. And lo and behold, this guy had Meek's brothers captive and slave this whole time. 
So you can see them right there. That's Meek. He couldn't really kill him either. Because Meek, it, it was just an unjust kill. So you see Meek's brothers right there coming up out of the ground. And they're praising Meek. And like I said, keep this in mind. Now, this is going to be a key thing later on in this series. And Meek and the Hulk, they pretty much leave. Because now you see the old strong coming to this same little town. And you can see the same guy right there. They were, they have been spared. So with that, I think I'll wrap that up right there. Please subscribe, man, if you want to stay in the loop with this. I'll be bringing these planet hosts back out. To all the old subscribers, yeah, I'll try to continue breaking, <laughs> breaking this down. Go ahead on and give me a big old like. And don't forget to comment, man. What do you guys think? Oh, I hadn't done this in a while. So, if you've made it to this part of the video, in the comment section, go ahead on and give me a squat for the KRL squad, man. Y'all remember, be blessed, keep God in your life, stay prayed up, man. In this crazy, crazy world, Cajun Wine, the Red Leo, I'm out, baby.